gamers all around the world. Instead of doing a Civ tier list for top level, for medium level, for the map, for this, for that. So what I thought is trying something new. Instead of doing one video a month for Civ tier list, I was like, you know what? I can spread that content out a little bit, get three videos out of it. So what I'm gonna do and see how you, you guys like it. And if you don't like it, we'll revert back to one. But I wanted to make a Civ tier list per age, excluding Dark Age, obviously. So. This is going to be a Civ tier list for Feudal Age, then we're going to do Civ tier list for Castle Age, and then for Imperial Age. Let's get started. The best Feudal Civ is definitely French. Uh, there's no doubt about that one. Uh, I think everyone knows this. Feudal has, um, you know, knights in Feudal that can also heal. In theory, you shouldn't be losing any battles because you can always just pull up, pull back your knights, you can heal. Uh, they can produce archers, the economy is great, they have cheaper economic upgrades, so even if they get economic upgrades like really early in feudal, as long as they force the opponent to stay in feudal, uh, they're just gonna win out all the trades because they got good units to deal to work with, and they also got the cheaper upgrades, and they got faster production on their villagers, they also have the option of going second TC, and then uh, not only you're producing villagers faster, but you're double producing villagers faster. So they're just probably the best Civ in Feudal Age. Uh, what is the weakness of, the, of uh, French? Well, the knights are very, very expensive. If their gold gets targeted, their uh, knight production can be, you know, stopped. Eventually, they need to go out on the map to get food unless they go professional scouts, but that slows down their aggression. So your best chance of beating French is uh, trying to defend. Uh, while slowly denying their food sources and eventually just kind of overwhelming their army. You can also, with some civs, technically tech up to castle and, and try to beat them that way, but it's going to be very hard and uh, there's a high chance you're going to just straight up die. So you kind of need to prevent their food slash gold in order to defeat them. All right, uh, next civ that we will be talking about is and this is again specifically talking about fighting in feudal and trading in feudal okay this is not the next sieve is I i'm gonna have to give it to english i mean english is not played in feudal anymore as much as it used to be uh, as much as it used to um you know you go spearman longbowman and you clash and yada yada but if you can manage to get some farms up and if you manage to get your opponent kind of locked into that I gotta make units or I'm gonna die English is probably even better than French for a different reason and the reason is you can harass English so if they have their farms up and they got their wood line they don't really need gold to fight you in English in uh, feudal age so the only place you can actually harass is their wood line but their workers can actually just shoot and fight you so you need to send like overwhelming raids. Like you can't send three horsemen. They're gonna actually die to villagers. You need to send like 10, 15 horsemen, but then you can get pushed at the front. And they have just mass, mass, mass infantry that doesn't really have a clear answer in Feudal Age. Uh, longbows will out micro the archers. They will out micro men at arms. They will out micro spearmen if micro properly. The only counter to longbows is horsemen or knights, but then you got your own spears. And even if the situation kind of gets weird with a lot of archers on both sides, English can always add men-at-arms, which are very, very tanky. So, yeah, they're a great fighting civ. Uh, they don't have as much potential to deal damage. They're more like killing, right? They, they just go for the kill. Um, or they just purely deny resource. They're kind of like more control-based into an attack where English is, or uh, sorry, where French is more uh, harass based, kind of picking off villager here and there, and then just kind of swarming your army and, and deleting you. So yeah, they, they play a little bit different, uh, but both are equally, equally good. The next Civ that we will be discussing is a Delhi. Uh, the only reason why I don't put Delhi at S is because Delhi loses to both French and English in Feudal, in straight up fights. And um, Delhi is one of the very few civs that can actually maintain the fighting for a very long time. But you're not really fighting to kill them in Feudal, you're not really fighting to get an advantage uh, by, I don't know, killing their workers in Feudal. The only reason Delhi is good in feudal against these two civs is because it it buys you it can buy you long enough time to go to castle, right? 
So if you both stay in feudal forever, you will lose to both English and French. But like I said, if you micro properly, if you use your scholars properly to heal, you can give yourself that space to go to, to castle and then get elephants or men at arms or whatever units to be able to deal with English and French. And also Delhi uh, has very, very good time against all these other civs uh, and fighting them. So I think that's a, that's a pretty good spawn or pretty good spot to be. Uh, next civ is Mongols. Um, I think Mongols is obviously one of the best civs, maybe best, maybe second best civ overall. Uh, but in terms of fighting in feudal, you don't really want to be stuck. Uh, if you ever play Mongol versus English, if you don't manage to get castle fast enough, the English can actually switch to men at arm longbow and you will simply die because you don't really have a counter. Yeah, you, you're, just gonna, you're just gonna have a very, very rough time. Uh, Mongol versus French, it's played a little bit different uh, because you don't really stay in feudal and fight forever. You kind of, just like Delhi, you don't want to fight forever. You can't fight, but you don't want to fight forever. You kind of want to tower rush or distract your opponents on the way to castle. Uh, it does have the double stone production. It does have safe food, which also puts Mongols in a pretty good spot. Uh, because you can, you know, you can get pastures and get food forever. You put a tower on your gold and you're kind of safe to just keep trading, continue fighting. Um, but like I said, just like Delhi, that is not your peak point and you don't want to necessarily be staying there. These four civs are very tricky. Like, Rus is a very good civ to fight in feudal, but there's kind of like an expiration date and it also doesn't... It matches up. Rus matches up against these two and these three really, really well in feudal, but it doesn't really match up too, too well against French and English. Uh, so I'm going to have to put it actually here. The reason for that is um, the way French versus Rus works is... In, uh, so Rus strategies go for like the boar and then mass archers, right? That doesn't work against French because the French has knights. So they can constantly harass your boar. That's number one. So you don't usually go for boar as, as Rus in this matchup. So your only other option is because you can't go archers, you have to go knights. But French has better knights. So if you enter the knight versus knight battle, technically the knights are same, but the French knights heal. So you're just kind of like a budget French player at that point. So usually the strat with Rus against both uh, English and against French is to get uh, a boar as a distraction more so than a reliable food source while taking to castle and going into like the castle knights or going into uh, horse archers. And against English, because English has a much slower push, the longbows, technically you could play knights archers versus English, but again, your knights don't heal. So over time, the English player will be able to kind of wear you down. You can use professional scouts, but even that food will run out eventually. And English the whole time is just getting in the food from the farms and they don't care about it. Especially if the English goes and makes towers around your base and stuff like that. There, there's kind of no longevity and your only saving grace is to get to castle. So uh, I'm going to just put Rus in this same tier where it's not necessarily bad. Rus actually is very good against Delhi and Mongols in these types of trades, but all these civs can fight decently until a point where they just have to go to castle or it's going to be a losing battle from, from then on out. Um, the, the larger the armies become, English and French will have a, a better trade. Uh, next civ we will be talking about is Ab Acid. Um, Abbasid is a is an interesting one. It's an interesting one because technically you want to get to castle so you can produce men at arms, you can produce better camels, you can produce siege. And it's technically bad because you're on 2 TC. So you're vulnerable, right? You're vulnerable to attacks because you have that second TC. But your villagers are cheaper and the longer the time passes, it kind of creates this pressure on your opponent where the opponent has to attack you or tech up. They have to make an instant decision. They can't just do nothing, right? But if they continue attacking you, you're kind of forcing them into a decision that maybe they didn't want to make and you can outproduce them. So Abbasid doesn't win with uh, better units. It doesn't win with... Uh, you know, sneaky plays, it just wins on overwhelming because you have more workers. The reason why it's not that great is because versus a good French, English, Mongol, Delhi, 
uh, or Roost player, you can die very easily. Like it's very hard to protect your bases. If done well, uh, you know, you can do it. And by the way, I'm talking about these on like maps where you can be aggressive. Like if we're talking about Hill and Dale, that is a completely different story because most of the civs on Hill and Dale or Mongolian Heights just skip feudal fighting completely. So I'm talking in situations where you have to fight in feudal for one reason or the other. Uh, because like I said, on Hill and Dale you just skip feudal, you wall off, you go castle and that's it. I would say Abbasid can defend, you know, they can make rams instantly, they can push out the towers if the opponent makes them. Uh, camel archers are not, they're okay in, in feudal, but they're not that great. But your plan is to kind of overwhelm your opponent uh, and kind of regain the, the, the control that way. But Abbasid is not a sieve where you're like, you know, where you're like, okay, let's just keep fighting in feudal forever. No, you your your goal is to deflect the attack and move on to the castle as fast as you possibly can while being very defensive. While these other three sieves, they want to get to castle, but they can also be aggressive and they can also kind of counterattack. They can uh, they can actually fight the English and, and French army to a point. While Abbasid is more like you kind of like steering the whole time to not die while slowly getting the advantage wherever you can, like securing your food sources and stuff like that. And like I said, if you make a mistake or, or lose, you know, a couple of villagers too many, you're going to have a very hard time recovering because if at any point, let's say you lose a, lunch, a lot of villagers and then your opponent takes up uh, to castle, you can't uh, speed up your castle uh, age up, right? The Zabasid, because you have to wait because it's, it's upgrading House of Wisdom. So that's another weakness of Abbasid. If you fall uh, behind on the castle age up, there's no way to speed it up. And you might be caught off guard with, you know, better tier units and enter all kinds of problems. China and HRE. Mm -mm -mm. I would say both of these are pretty, pretty bad. Regarding super open maps and fighting, um, I would, I, I would have to say Atrium is probably the worst, to be honest. Now, there's an interesting thing where Atrium is technically not bad, and I'll try to explain why. So, with any sieve, any of these sieves, if you want to defend or just fight, you can just make stables and you can make spears or stables and archers and, and fight, right? That's not the issue. Every um, Civ has the same stats as far uh, except knights and longbows, right? The, the reason for HRE not being good in feudal fights, prolonged feudal fights especially, is because what is the end goal, right? Let's say you do defeat your opponent's army somehow, you still want to go castle, but then your castle timing and everything is so delayed because you were forced to fight that it just kind of feels like well, you could just play another sieve on the open map, right? It doesn't, it, it, it can't be killed as easily, right? Because of the uh, uh, auto repair. So that's very good. It's very hard to actually kill an HRE player, but you can limit their food source so, so easily and try to defeat them that way. Now, I know a lot of people will say, yeah, but they can build farms around chapel and get the income that way. If you're building farms as early as feudal, that is not a great position for you because instead of using those resources to, you know, make units and fight, you're using them to make food, right? So you're using wood to get food while most other civs are just going around the map and scavenging everything. It's very hard to get map control as HRE against any of these civs because they either have better units, they either have bigger bursts of economy, like Rus has insane economy with boar and uh, archers. So it's very hard for you as an HRE to control the map, which is why it's like the number one civ that wants to bail to castle and just not look at feudal at all. And with the recent changes of uh, having a prelate right on start, that makes it a bit easier to reach castle a, a lot safer. So there's literally no reason for you to even engage in any kind of feudal battles for that reason. Uh, and I, that's why I think personally it's the worst civ in feudal to fight. Now, does this mean that uh, uh, a true player cannot defeat English army? No, that, that's not what that means. But if you think about it, if you're both fighting and you're, let's say you're trading, right? HRE is trading, English is trading, they got farms. So their economy is completely stable. Nothing's changing at all. But suddenly you have to move from your TC. You have to move to another source of food 
and that makes you more exposed. And you know, you can say you can make a tower. Yeah, you can make a tower, but they are not making those towers. They're making more units. So the longer the game goes, you're kind of just losing out slowly and you're not getting any efficiency while the opponent's efficiency is exactly equal, right? So as long as you're trading, eventually you run out of food and you have to go farms and then the other opponents most likely don't because they either got farms or they got uh, better map control. Not to mention, uh, like I said, Rus has knights, uh, English has longbows, French has knights. Uh, Mongols can put towers on your food sources, which also makes it hard to get to your food sources. So there's just a lot of problems for uh, HRE. People are mentioning, uh, aren't, don't they have men-at-arms? Uh, early AK feudal men-at-arms lose to longbows and they also lose to knights. Yeah, not to mention like Delhi, right? Delhi has free upgrades. So if you're trading, they just got all their upgrades for free. Are you really gonna get all your upgrades in feudal as HRE? Probably not, right? So there's a lot of uh, kind of weaknesses along the line. Even though at first it looks like, oh, you can just fight as HRE. The longer the game goes, it just kind of goes downhill and there's no benefit for you, basically. Not to mention if at any point you lose your prelates, it, it's very expensive. And uh, it's basically like losing a villager because you got to produce it from TC. <clears throat> now, China put in C tier because um, China is a sieve that wants to go for boom, wants to, uh, you know, go... It's kind of like a between Abbasid and HRE, which is why it's in between them, literally. Uh, China wants to go for second TC usually, maybe even a Song Dynasty or just Song Dynasty into Castle or both. And the reason why it's a bit better than HRE is because it has Barbican of the Sun, which, um, you know, it doesn't prevent all-ins. If, if an opponent makes a ram, they can definitely just kill the Barbican. But it gives you a lot of range. It uh, kind of cuts off the part of the map that you want protected, at least in the early game. It buys you a lot of time from your opponent. Uh, their feudal towers are much better, so if you're looking to defend, uh, their feudal towers are much up, uh, better if you want to upgrade embers any kind of all-in because they have a different uh, attack. Uh, they have Zhuganu, which are the, uh, as I like to call them, the Chinese crossbow. Um, they pretty much can trade really, really well against everything, even horsemen, if you're using them defensively. Uh, the only thing they can really trade against is knights. Uh, but if you get a couple of spears and you get a mass of them, you can defend all-ins. So they have a much easier time defending all-ins. Now the same problem persists uh, with HRE. The longer the game goes, you're running out of resources. And as long as your opponent is keeping in your base, it's great that you're defending, but you need to go to castle to actually break out of your base, you know, with palace guards, with nested bees or whatever else, um, because China's power is in the late game. So it's, it's, you can't stay in feudal forever uh, is my point. Technically, you can go, you know, early farms like HRE, but that doesn't put you ahead, it puts you behind. And when that moment comes, that's where the opponent gradually kind of gets more and more value over you. Now, why did I rate them under Abbasid? Um, it's very hard to, even once you defend with uh, China, it's very hard to push out because their units are very slow, very clunky. So even if you have, had, let's say, Spearman, Zhuganu, and you defend, if you counter push, you can get surrounded with knights, with horsemen. You can't really retreat. Uh, you can't really do the, uh, you know, scoot and shoot with your uh, Zhuganu like you can with archers. They're less microable. They're actually better DPS if you just leave them and they let them brr, brr, brr the opponent. So even if you defend, you know, you kind of have to sit at home and your opponent still has the map. While with Abbasid, if you're defending with like Horseman Spearmen or Horseman Camel Archers, the moment you defend, you can counterattack, you can do so many more things. And China is, you know, a bit more uh, defensive. So, I mean, you notice the trend, right? The sieves that are the best in Feudal Age are the sieves that benefit from it, that have unique units from Feudal Age that are good. Uh, the sieves that have, you know, towers that can control parts of the map, free upgrades, uh, boar gathering, and just uh, way better woodline cutting, which allows you to produce more archers. And the sieves that don't have those kinds of immediate bonuses are just not that good. Um, a lot of people suggested for people like to try Abbasid Military Wing with the 50% health. It's not good. Like other sieves will still um, beat you in a straight up fight. It does help, but then you lose the bonus of having your villagers produce for 25 food. So you kind of gain something, but you lose something, right? And the other sieves, they just gain. 
so this is the fuel sieve tier list i try to explain it the, the, the best i can why i think these sieves are good or bad in feudal uh this doesn't mean that a3 and china are bad sieves or abbasid is a bad sieve because the next time i do a castle sieve tier list you will see that a lot of these are going to be shifting around and a lot of these are going to be changing. If you're watching this on YouTube, let me know what you thought about this kind of content where I explain more in depth why Civ is bad at a certain point in the game, aka in this one in Feudal. In the next one, I'll cover the castle, explain the strength weaknesses of each Civ, and uh, definitely a lot of Civs move up and down in in ranks from then on out so yeah if you're watching on youtube thanks so much for watching if you're watching on twitch let's keep going